really, it's only 9.30. <laughs> well, That's what that clock says back there. there. <laughs> 9.30. So I got an hour and a half. Lord help us. I get it. <laughs> God bless you for being here today. I do want to remind you that we have prayer meeting here every Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, so I do want you to come. Last night uh, we had several people here. And unless the roads are covered in ice or snow, I want you to be here. You'll get a blessing out of it. Amen. You'll get a blessing out of it. You say, well, uh, I'd rather be watching some basketball or uh, some football or something. I don't. Uh, I love to be here. Amen. I, I mean, I love to be here. If I'm the only one show up, me and my family, uh, you know, uh, as much as many things that we had to do yesterday, we still uh, uh, came and we prayed. And how many of you want revival? Real revival. How many of you want one? Raise your hand. Come on now. Don't be scared. You young people don't want revival in your life? You know what? Raise your hand if you want revival. Amen. Amen. Just the young people, I raise my hand again. I <laughs> Amen. But I tell you, we need revival in this country. Amen. We need revival in this country. God in heaven wants us to call upon Him for revival. And if we'll call upon Him and we're faithful in doing that, God will send revival. But the revival has to start. Revival has to start in mine, in your life. Amen. It has to start here before we can ever have revival. Amen. Now, I want you to listen to what I got to say this morning. Don't want you to be talking to nobody. I want you to listen to what I got to say this morning. A lot of us, we think about the goodness of God. You think about how good he's been to every person Amen. in here. You think about how good he's been to you. You look at them uh, people on the news in Ukraine. Hundreds and millions of people, they have fled the country with nothing but the clothes on their back. And a couple, maybe suitcases or backpacks or something. That's all they got. That's all they got. In the middle of the Lord's Prayer, these words are mentioned in verse number 11 in Matthew 6. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. How many people this morning before you had breakfast prayed? How many of you last night for supper prayed and asked God to bless the food Amen. and thank Him for the food? Charles Hatton Spurgeon tells us that that we need to pray the Lord's Prayer every day and really mean it when we pray it. These verses remind us that we are dependent on God for everything. Amen. Dependent on Him. Amen. Gas prices, pray that God will bring them down because He can. Amen. He can. Think about the, your car that you went out and stuck the key in this morning and cranked it. Think about how God's goodness is to you. Did yours not crank this morning, Brother Ronnie? It was quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 
Uh, yeah, whenever you hear that, uh, 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 then it catches and you say, praise God. But see, everything that he gives us is a blessing to us. Amen. Is a blessing to us. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above Amen. and comes down from the Father of light. Verse 17. How many of you got good gifts this week? Amen. I got a new coat. Amen. <laughs> That's right. You said, well, who gave you that new coat? I did. Well, I got tied too, brother. <laughs> if you want it, brother Charlie, you can have it. Amen. Uh, brother McKeever, uh, I get tickled at him. Uh, Harold Mitchell, uh, brother McKeever, uh, for those of you that know him, uh, he come walking in one day, Brother Harold Mitchell had a red coat on and uh, uh, so Brother McKeever said I sure do like that coat Brother Harold pulled it off and gave it to him Amen. the next Sunday he came in and he said I sure do like them boots you got on, he started pulling them off I said wait a minute Brother McKeever you come in here begging for clothes I said good gracious you got enough money that you can go buy some. He said, yeah, but I like those. They're already broke in. They <laughs> just like it, bro. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with coming to church having fun. Amen. Amen. But I want you to concentrate this morning on the goodness of God and his blessings. Some people say, why should I pray for my daily bread I can take care of my own needs. Oh. I've heard people say that. Why should I pray? I can work and take care of my own needs. But listen. If it were not for God's love and God's grace, you would not have anything. Amen. Amen. You would not have anything. I would not have anything. I would not have the, uh, the nice home I live in. It's taken some work. It's taken some time to get there. But praise be to God, we got our house paid off. And, you know, that's God's goodness. And God's love and God's grace. We need to pray this morning. And every day. And we need to be reminded of the truth of God in everything. Amen. In everything. My dear friend, when you woke up this morning, how about the breath he gave you? Amen. Some mornings I wake up, I have bad breath. <laughs> but it's still breathing, brother. Amen. Amen. And see, God gives you that breath. Amen. Why does he give us that breath? That we can live. Listen. And you can serve him that day. Amen. In everything you do, give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. Everything. Every blessing. You go out and you stick your key in the car and you turn it and it cranks. Thank God for his goodness to you. Let me tell you something. As a young man, 17, 18 years old, I'd work after high school in the grocery store. Three nights a week, I'd work to midnight. Sometimes Brother Harold Mitchell would wait on me because he drove a bus. He'd wait on me about a block away. And I'd be in a dead run trying to get that bus. 
Sometimes I'd have to work a little late and I missed the bus. And you talking about walking from downtown Birmingham out all the way out to the airport. Sometimes I'd, I'd tie my jacket on, my hat on. I mean, I'd put it on my head and I'd be in a dead run. And I would run. Me and two other guys. Because we all lived at the mercy home. And we'd go all the way, run all the way, and get there, we'd be tired. But boy, we would go to sleep real quick. <laughs> then the next morning, we'd have to get up at 6 o'clock. Get up at 6 o'clock. We'd get to bed about 1, sometimes 1.30. But see, God in heaven was watching over us. Amen. And it was God's goodness. Why? He knew what was laying ahead in our life. Remember what the Lord's word says. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on, on me shall never thirst. John 6.35 Thank God for all of his gifts, especially the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The greatest gift of all Amen. was the Lord Jesus. Now you think about this morning all his goodness to you. All of his love, all of his grace to me and you. Think about when you go out and you get in your car and you go down the road and you see a wreck. And that was the same direction you were going in. If you'd have been five minutes sooner, you'd have been in that wreck. Or sometimes you would see a wreck and you say, thank, Lord, thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me. See, one of the uh, enemy's tricks is to uh, convince us that our Father is holding out on us. Yeah. He's holding out on us. That He does not really love us or care for us. He doesn't. But He does. Amen. Yeah. But see, the devil tries to trick you into thinking that. When Satan approached Eve, he suggested to her that God really does not love you. If he really loved you, he would permit you to eat of that tree, uh, that forbidden fruit. If he really loved he was holding out on you. My dear friend, all of God's gifts, just like the verse says in verse 17, all of his gifts are perfect. To me and you. They're good. They're perfect. Sometimes when God gives us a blessing. And we want to share it with people. Amen. We want to share it with people. Not long ago. I was in the grocery store. And there was a lady in front of me. And I was only getting bananas and something else, just a loaf of bread. And the Holy Spirit of God spoke to my heart. He said, don't you pay for that lady's groceries. Lord, I'm only getting bananas and bread. She's got a half a buggy full. Lord said, I want you to do that. Amen. Okay. Okay, Lord. And I walked up there to her and I said, ma'am, can you do me a favor? She said, if I can. I said, would you let me pay for your groceries? She said, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? 
and she started crying. She said, we have struggled to get our pennies together this morning, our money together to buy groceries. Mm. And she said, I, I just, I had thought, Lord, help me to have the money. And I said, well, I said, God told me to do that. She said, can you afford it? I said, yes, ma'am. I can. And she said, she said, I, don't, I, I just don't understand. I said, well, God told me to. You thank him for it. You thank him for it. And I said, it, it's a blessing to me. And she said, can I hug your neck? I said, yes, ma'am, you can. I said, now, if you've got a lot of perfume on, my wife would be wondering where I've been. <laughs> And the cashier looked at her and says, ma'am, he does this all the time. She said, why do you want to do that? I said, because I love the Lord and I try to be sensitive to what he tells me to do. I try to be very sensitive to that. Not long ago, I was in the grocery store, the basketball coach from over at uh, Tabernacle was in there and he was buying, he had, oh good night, five, six gallons of milk in his buggy and, and uh, uh, I didn't see the steaks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. And then, uh, you know, I said, Good Lord, how many kids you got? He said, I got, how many, darling? 14. 14 kids. Real kids? Yeah, they, they're really good. And I said, <laughs> I said, would you allow me to pay for that for you? He said, yes, sir, you can. <laughs> Maybe for the steaks up Yeah. I said, yes, sir. He said, yes, sir, you can. So, he put them up there and everything, and I said, oh, my gosh. When they said it was $125. And uh, I said, I said, what cost so much? He said, it was those steaks in that buggy. I said, well, I ain't seen the steaks. <laughs> I said, but the Lord told me to do it. He said, you're a servant of God, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Did not know him from Adam. And he said, thank you. Thank you so much. He said, who are you, by the way? And I told him, he said, yeah, you got Darlene Sproul in your church. And he said, uh, uh, the principal there come from your church. I said, yeah. Yeah, sure did. They're good people. They're good people. They care about people. See, if you care about people, God in heaven sees you, sees what you do. Once we start doubting God's goodness, we will be attacked and we will be attracted to Satan's offers. Amen. And the natural desire will reach out and we'll take that bait. Why? Because we're doubting. We're doubting God's goodness. Moses warned Israel not to forget God's goodness. When they began to enjoy the blessings of the promised land in Deuteronomy 6. But they did. We need to, as brothers and sisters of Christ, we need to heed that warning. Amen. We need to heed that warning. And don't forget the blessings and the goodness of God. 
James presents four facts about the goodness of God. And I'm going to give you two of them today. And next Sunday I'll give you the other two. So you got to be here next Sunday to get all four. God gives only good gifts. Think about that. God only gives good gifts. You say, well, Brother Carroll, what about the, the things that happen to me, the worst things? God's not the author of confusion. Amen. He's not. Everything good in this world comes from God. If it does not come from God, it's not good. It's not good. Now the Bible says, Nothing good will I withhold from them that walketh upright. If you're walking upright, you're praying and you're asking the Lord, you're living right, you're doing right. <coughs> then God's goodness. If it comes from God, it must be good. Even if we do not see the goodness in it immediately. You know, the Lord allows us sometimes to go through things. To help other people. To help other people. I remember Brother Charlie, I was going through radiation treatments. And I asked myself, I said, Lord, why are you allowing me to go through this? Why are you allowing me to go through this? And I know why now. But I couldn't see it immediately. Because I was able to witness to doctors. I was able to witness to the technicians. To the people that were sitting in the waiting room there. There was this one gentleman, he was so bitter. I mean, just bitterness just spewing out his mouth. And I went over to him and I said, Sir, I don't know what you're going through. I said, I'm a born-again Christian. Can I pray for you? He looked at me with that bitter attitude, you know, like... Like that, he could run through me. He said, no. Nope. I said, okay. Next day, he was in there. I went in. And I asked him again. I said, sir, I said, can I pray for you? Because his time and my time was just about together there. He went a little bit for me. Finally, he said, he said, uh, uh, he said, what are you having done? I said, I'm having radiation treatments on my uh, face right here. He said, is that face thing back there, is that for you? I said, yep, show sure is. He said, what do they do with that? I said, well, they put it over my face, and they tie me down to that table. I can't move, can't blink, nothing. And uh, the technician asked me when they were doing that, uh, uh, do you have uh, a phobia? I said, yep. Well, just close your eyes and pray. He said, you're a preacher? I said, yep, just close your eyes and pray. It's okay. So I closed my eyes. She said, now don't be blinking your eyes now. It's okay. But see, God had me to go through that, and I could help somebody else. So finally, I told the guy, I just walked up to him, I said, Sir, I'm going to pray for you. I didn't ask him, could I? 
I'm going to pray for you. I just laid my hand on his shoulder and I started praying. He didn't move. And I prayed for him. The last day I was there, he thanked me. He said, thank you. Thank you. He said, I've been through a tough, tough time. But I want you to see this morning that the goodness of God. See, Paul's thorn in the flesh was given to him by God and it seemed to be a, a strange gift. Yet, because of uh, his tremendous blessings to him, God, Paul, accepted that thorn in the flesh. Amen. Paul prayed, asked God to remove it. No. Sometimes I think, I said, Lord, why are you giving me, why is my foot hurting so bad? He keeps me in check. Because when it's really hurting, I lay down and I pray and ask God to remove the pain. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he does. So that's okay. That's okay. The second thing I want you to see, and I'm going quickly, the way God give, uh, the, uh, the way God gives is good too, the way he gives it. We can translate the second thing here that every act of giving that God gives to us is good. Amen. Every act of his goodness is good. It is possible for someone to give a good gift in the right manner of love. But see, the value of the gift can sometimes, uh, it demands by the way it is given to us. Sometimes people think they have to give an expensive gift. Sometimes just a card does the same thing. All of us like to get gifts, don't we? Amen. Amen. Now don't go to sleep. But when the gift is given as a blessing, God does it because he loves us. And he gives it in the grace of manner, the manner of grace. What he gives and how he gives it are both good. The day you got saved, he gave you the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Which was a good gift. You didn't earn it. You didn't do nothing for it. When God spoke to your heart, you just said, okay. 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 Just remember this. All good gifts and all perfect gifts come from God. Look at verse 17 again. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light. Comes down from the Father of light. We will examine the rest of that verse next week. He wants you and I to understand and to be thankful for the gifts he gives us. Amen. I'm preparing a sermon now. God spoke to me the other afternoon and I'm preparing a sermon on the blood of Jesus. Man, I got so excited when the Lord spoke to me and I started looking up verses of Scripture and everything. I got excited about it. How about you? Are you excited about serving the Lord? Are you excited about 
giving to the Lord, Amen. giving to the Lord's work. If you're a teacher, a deacon, or someone in position, you ought to be here on Saturday night to pray. You ought to be here on Saturday night to pray and ask God to help you. If we really want our country turned around, we've got to pay the price of praying and asking God. What does Chronicles say? My people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And my dear friend, our land needs a great healing. Amen. Our land needs a great healing. Let's all stand.